This is Young, Black, and a podcast bringing light to the Black artist experience in Charlotte and beyond. We're your hosts, Bree and Tracy. Hey, Bree, how are you doing? I'm good, Tracy. How are you? I'm doing well. Yay. You looking all happy and smiley. What's up with you? Honestly, I just feel like after going through so many different things within the past few weeks, my emotions have been so haywire. Like now I'm starting to have a different perspective on a lot of things and I just feel good about where I am and where I need to be and just having a different perspective and an outlook like when something happens that you don't expect or doesn't go your way. um, I think it's important to take time and really, really try to reflect through it and process through it. So I gave myself some time to do that. And now I've come to the conclusion where I have peace and I'm just like, okay, cool. I'm going to vibe it out. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really good. How are you? The last couple of weeks, I had been feeling more and more emotionally volatile. (laughs) And I wasn't, I I had been so busy. Mm -hmm. Every day had something going on. So I wasn't really paying attention to anything Mm -hmm. except for what I needed to do. Right. And then I realized why I was emotionally volatile. And it had to do with a woman being a woman. I was like, oh, everything makes sense now. (laughs) (laughs) I checked my calendar. I was like, whoops. Oh my gosh. Like usually I sort of, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling sort of mean. Let me check the calendar. Yep. Sure enough. Mm -hmm. But you know, I was feeling mean. I was feeling short tempered. I was annoyed at everything and I was bloated and I was like, what is happening with me? (laughs) I don't know how I didn't know what it was. Duh. I was that busy. So I, well, you know, what's so funny that really might be with the same thing with me. Like, I'm not an emotional person. I'm not a crier. And I kid you not, everything has made me cry for the past two weeks. Like, no matter how stupid it was, how silly it was. Like, I could watch a video on Facebook and I'm, like, bawling. Or I see, like, something on TV about dogs and all of a sudden I'm crying. <laughs> and, like, it's been super, super sensitive. And yesterday morning when I woke up, I was like, ah, okay, well. Right. Was it? <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> and listen, okay. All right, here I, I'm at this point now where I feel like, you know what, men, if you're scared away by this, then you're immature and you don't need to be listening Very, to this podcast. Yeah, you don't okay. Need to your life. Right. The the thing is, we as a cast, all of us have been hanging out together, and one thing that we know is that women when we're in the vicinity of each other for a regular amount of time, yes. our cycles will connect, they'll sync up. Yeah. And so the fact that you started yesterday, I started day before yesterday and mine was actually a couple of days early. Mm-hmm. Um so I'm willing to bet that probably all of us were pretty much getting in that same place and while our cycles are syncing, they get more intense. Yeah. So that might be why you were like, I just don't know why. I don't why understand. I, I, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so that just probably explained everything. Ah. This is a real struggle. Right. But it seems like we're constantly, as women, we're constantly learning ourselves. And that's mm-hmm. something that I was thinking about. I almost posted on social media this morning. I was like, I love how much I've learned about myself just because I've been in my apartment for a little over a month now and how much I've learned about myself and like mm-hmm. loving myself and everything, every inch and part of me and having an opportunity to do that. So this is something new I'm learning. So next month, it's just like, a okay, let's watch these emotions. <laughs> well, um, if any of our listeners want to contribute to the conversation, you know, what have you learned about yourself? What have you learned about your emotions? Mm-hmm. How does your cycle affect it? Let's not be afraid to have these kind of conversations, even though we didn't right. see it coming for this podcast. But, you know, whatever. But yeah, to sort of bring it back <laughs> to, <laughs> to what, what we're, we're supposed, supposed to, talk to be about. talking about. So this week, we are having a conversation with Bali. Yes, the beautiful Bali. The beautiful Bali. Bali is of Liberian descent. So her name is spelled G-B-A-L-E, but that is pronounced Bali. The G is silent. And I think that's pretty dope. Brie, I think you came in towards the end of this interview. I did. So we get to learn a lot about Bali's background that I didn't know of. So um, in Eclipsed, Bali plays the girl. She's like the central character. Mm -hmm. If you ever pay attention to like any of the posters that you've ever seen, Lupita Nyong'o face is usually on the poster. And Lupita Nyong'o played the girl on Broadway. Um, And basically, as we're watching this story 
of these five women. We're we're watching the evolution, I guess you want to say, of the girl, what she goes through. And a lot of the things that we learn, we learn through her. We learn with her. And I think Bali does such a fantastic job at it. Like she has this innocence about her that comes out that like I have to remind myself like Bali is not a 15 year old girl. (laughs) Bali is a 27 year old mother married with two kids. Mm -hmm. Like what she brings to this character is some it's just so stunning to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so we've got a real treat for you because you get to hear from her. You get to learn a little bit more about her. And I know you're going to love it. Without further ado, here's Bali. Yes, y'all. Bali, we're so excited to have you here. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so originally we were going to interview both you and Rocky together because we're yeah, interviewing why? in well, we're interviewing <laughs> in pairs. Okay. And so we were trying to pair people up by sort of like the character that they most had the most in common with okay. or that they were most at odds with. And so when we interviewed Rory, Mm -hmm. he paired you and Rocky up. Here's what director D. Abdullah and producer Rory Sheriff had to say about Bali's audition for the role of the girl. Probably the girl was the one, the one that was the most important role. And between the girl that I have playing Betsy now, those two were my two in terms of who I would decide as the girl. One was because size was definitely a factor because they had to fit under a tub. So then after that, then there was a level of innocence and naivety that I want. And both of them have that. And the, the reason why I decided one to do one role and one to do the other is the is the way in which they were their innocence manifests itself. And Wabali, her innocence her innocence came across in a way that it was it was it was very childlike, but at the same time she has a, has a real confidence and maturity about her with her innocence and the way that her innocence kind of man came across to me. So, um, so once I had those, so you two guys, decided, you guys were hitting some of those lines and nailing them, like I pictured them to be hit. Let's take Bali for example. Bali was. For me, she was on the fence. I had I had Bali and Raquel back to back. And I didn't have the girl casted because I was like, all right, we're just gonna have to we're just gonna look for someone else. But Bessie, I was considering Bessie for Bali and Raquel. So we're kind of switching them back and forth to seeing who was gonna do it. So I was already leaning towards Raquel, but D was leaning a little bit for Bali to, 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 to be there too. So I was like, okay. And, and the crazy thing that happened is uh, when we had Rocky read for Bessie and we had Bali read for the girl, they both fell into those characters. And I said, like, ah, we got our girl. Because she did something, she like made this one moment pop and how it should have popped. And just the way her eyes was looking and, you know, you look for all those little things instead of just acting. You look for the expression and the, the moments that, that she's embodying. Like, are you supposed to look sad? Or are you supposed to look innocent? And Molly did that. So like, we're casting. We're good. <laughs> so I didn't know that. You were there for that first interview where we interviewed the whole cast. So we know how you heard about the auditions and all of that kind of stuff. But I would love to hear more from you about your background as an actor. Like what made you interested in acting? When did you first become interested in acting? Oh, okay. I would have to say, I don't, I don't even think that I, I've always been acting. I've always been doing it. I just remember like my family just saying like, there goes our little dancer. There goes our little actor. Ooh, she's Bali this, Bali that, you know? So, um, <laughs> I've just always been an animated kid. And then the first time I got introduced to the theater, I was eight years old. And I actually was in the San Diego Opera. Um, I played an extra in the, I think it was called Cold Sassy Tree in 19... 19- Ooh, wait, how old was I? 1999. And you were, you said you were in San Diego? Mm-hmm, yeah, I was okay. in California. So is that where you were born? No, I was born in New York. So how'd you get to California? My stepdad was in the Navy, so we traveled out west, and then we traveled to Italy and then Japan. So what was that like? Fun. How long were you in each place? 
So California, we were there for about five years. Italy, three. And Japan, three. Mm-hmm. So I like to say I wasn't raised in the States. So my perception of things are quite different than my peers. And that, that really showed when I came back <laughs> my senior year of high school. And um, it was just different. And, and, and I experienced theater differently because I was in other places. How would you say what was different? Um, I got to see it from their lens. Like, I used to visit a lot of amphitheaters when I lived in Italy. Um, that was, like, one of our school trips. We went to Syracuse twice. And, How um, old were you when that happened? 11 and, no, 12 and 13. That was cool. And we would, like, see, you know, how they entertained. And so I got a feel for, like, the, the I guess, the classical way of theater, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then with Japanese theater, it's totally different from that. Like, yeah. it's very structured. I don't think they do a lot of method-type acting. It's, um, but it's very expressive. Yeah, and then, like, you know, for quite some time in that world women weren't allowed to act so that's you know that's a big thing um talking about the kabuki theater and things like that Mm -hmm. so yeah so i just i got to see theater from different i guess worldly views than just the united states yeah did you get to do any theater while you were there i mean Um, i know you were fairly young but well japan i really didn't get to do much i just because i was taking a lot of like the honors courses uh-huh. so like i didn't really get to act while i was out there and i was out there from like 14 to 17 mm-hmm. but italy that's i feel like that's where i blossomed because yeah. anytime there was a play i was like i'm in i'm in there, I'm in there. <laughs> give it give it to me where are we at what are we doing <laughs> And I just remember, actually, I remember the first time I, like, got a big reaction from the audience. It was when I was living in Italy, and I was in, um, we did a spoof of the Phantom of the Opera. And it was called <laughs> the Phantom of the Opera. And my dress was falling down, as I was, and I had on a fat suit. <laughs> and I was singing, and the audience is cracking up. Now, the song is funny, and I'm like, the song ain't that damn funny, Dad. Y'all cracking up like this. And I look down, and I see, like, my fat suit is showing so, like, the first thing, I don't know why I did this, but the first thing I thought was pick them up, act like they tassels. And I just started, like, rolling them around. And, like, they were like, oh, my God. And I was just like, yeah, this is where I'm supposed to be. Like, I belong here. Like, uh-huh. it was, like, second nature to just, like, have the show go on. So. And that shows your instinct instead of being like, oh, no. Let me yeah, let me run the off the stage. Right. Yeah. You were like, keep the show must go on, mm-hmm. like you said. So when you got back to the States, Mm -hmm. you were in California or you came back? I came here, actually. You came? Okay. I came to Charlotte. I I went to East Mecklenburg. East. Yeah. (laughs) And, um... Oh, I joined the drama club because I was like, I got to get back in here. Like, because I had like three years of not doing anything in Japan. Like, I just kind of danced while I was out there because that's Uh a big thing, especially like hip hop dance. Uh I'd be out in the street, like at night, dancing and stuff. Mom, you you don't know. (laughs) (laughs) No, I didn't make any money. It was just kind of like showcasing. Yeah. So it was fun. So I came to Charlotte, and um, I joined the drama club. I became the tre- treasurer of the drama club, and then I just kind of sung because uh, I was in the women's ensemble at school, and then I did plays. I actually directed my first play while I was in high school. And that was? I forgot what it was called. <laughs> I forgot. I, I cannot believe I forgot what it's called, and I wrote it. I didn't enjoy directing. I think that's why I don't remember it. Oh, so yeah. you would rather be on the stage yeah. than behind the scenes. I feel like the way I story tell is through the instrument of my body. So that's my that's the part I love. So right. I, I love direction, mm-hmm. like to be given direction. How did you hear about Eclipse? Oh, so one of my classmates from UNCC, my alma mater, Kenny. Kenny, he reached out and was like, hey, sis, like, you're Liberian. This mm-hmm. show's about, you know... The Liberian Civil War. Why don't you check it out? And I was like, you know, I'm in there. Like the kid, he's almost off the breast. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. So, um, but the thing was, I had the dates mixed up. So actually, the day of the last audition, another classmate from UNCC sent me the audition again. It was mm-hmm. like, hey, I don't know if you know about this, but today's the last day. And I was like, oh. Man, oh, now yeah. I gotta put everything together in like hours oh, and gosh. get over here yeah. and audition. But it paid off. I, yeah, it did. I just feel I felt bad because I didn't have time to like prep. But I mean, I, I guess you. it was meant to be. Right. So when you came and 
in red, mm -hmm. you weren't, were you familiar with any of the characters no, at all? No, not okay. at all. Not at so all. So you just came in and you were like, hey, I'm here to read. Yeah, and it was funny because <laughs> D goes, oh, so who are you here to read for? And I was like, all of them. Because I'm not going to tell her I don't know what right, this is about. Right, <laughs> All Perfect. of them. So did she make a suggestion or did... Um, she gave me Helena and the girl and I read the girl first and I was just like, oh, this is me. Like, mm -hmm. I just felt it. I really did. And I was like, Bali, are you being conceited right now? But like, <laughs> I really felt it. Like I started crying as I was reading the monologue. Mm -hmm. Like I had to take a second. And then when I read over Helena, because I had such this big emotional, like, connection with the girl i was just like yeah i don't even care if i get helena <laughs> yeah side. like right. i really just was like i'm gonna go through the motions like i'm gonna do it you right. know yeah the girl i just oh man so what what did you feel connected you to her so so deeply i think the idea that i had family back there during that time and the way she was describing what she saw and the idea that she was 15 years old in that like horrific moment and recalling it, I just, I, it just made me think about my family members. And I was mm -hmm. like, man, I wonder how many people experienced this. And mm -hmm. then it made me think beyond them because I was like, wow, there's actually a world out there where there's children that's experiencing this. And here I am complaining about my little problem. Okay. My Wi-Fi ain't on, you know. Nice. Like, <laughs> so it just kind of made me feel, it, it made me feel like I, I felt, I had felt like it was humbling me. Like, oh, girl, you need to think about other things than the things that you're worried about. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do the play. Like mm -hmm. I already wanted to do it because I wanted to be cast, but right. I wanted yes, to do it because now, now I feel like I have to like say something and I have to represent for my people and mm -hmm. the women and it, like this sense of strength that I felt after reading it. And I was just like, wow, I come from a strong stock. Like, not only am I a woman, but I'm a Liberian woman. Yeah. And, and the women that I come from, they survived this. Yeah. And so, you know, it just took on a whole nother life. And mm -hmm. so I, I just prayed about it. I was just like, man, I hope I get it. I hope I yeah. get it. But the way I felt during auditions, I, I just felt like it, it, no one could tell me I wasn't going to be in the show. Like, cause I just, I just felt that connected to yeah. it. Now, you're Liberian on your mother's side? Yes. Or, okay, okay. Just my mother's side. And was she born in Liberia? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mother was born in, Mon I want to say Jita County. That's okay. where my mom was born. But every, when I was little, they, they used to just kind of like say, oh, from Morovia. Just like yeah. to keep it simple. So like, that's the first thing I want to say. Like, yeah. oh, she's from Morovia. But yeah, she was born there and then she came stateside when she was eight years old. So have you been to Liberia? Not yet. So your connections to your mommy. Yeah. And then you have other family. I have a lot there. of family that's still there. Um, my great grandfather had 13 children mm -hmm. and I think half of them are stateside okay. and then the other half are there. So coming into this play, there's you and then there's Ruby, mm -hmm. our other castmate who has a, that Liberian connection mm -hmm. as well. So what has it been like to sort of experience Liberia with all of these other people that know nothing about the country? What has that been like? <sighs> it's a breath of fresh air because it's when when I think about how people perceive Africa, especially, you know, a lot of African Americans, it's uh -huh. almost in a negative connotation. Yeah. So to be around a group of women who like wanted to embrace it and experience it and and not shy away from the idea of like learning outside of what they knew about my home my family's home country it it was just breathtaking i mean it was a breath of fresh air yeah yeah so I, I just was excited and i want i wanted to do it with you guys and i and i wish that this would have been an experience that our audience would have partaken in because i feel like it would bring a different um feel to the show but i'm happy that we got to do it because at least i feel like the cast is coming from a different place now. It's not yeah. like, oh, we're just playing characters. Right. Like, it's like, oh, well, I know if you do fufu this way, it's going right. to come out that way. Like, yeah. you know, so we that know makes it cool. We know how to make it. Yeah. We know what it tastes like. Yeah. You know. So I do, I definitely love that part of it. Uh, and I think I'm honest, to be honest, that is a big part of the reason that Bree and I both wanted to do this podcast mm -hmm. 
because we wanted people to experience what we were experiencing and learning all that we were learning mm-hmm. about Liberia, about Liberian culture, and particularly about the war. Yeah. Because I remember when I the first time I read this play, I was like, this happened? Right. And I didn't even know. I'm out here living my life, like you said, complaining about the Wi-Fi, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. And this was happening in the world. See, and that, that like blows my mind that people didn't know about it. Like, I... I and like it happened before I was born, so I came into the world knowing about the war. Right. So it's just kind of weird when I hear that people didn't even know that we had a civil war. So what have you been doing to develop the character of the girl? <sighs> Y'all don't even want to know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, right. <laughs> um, so I try to come at her the way that I normally um, assess my character that I'm playing, which is just like kind of having a background story for her that I shape in my mind, write it out, have a journal kind of thing. But like I said, because this is this feels more dear to me, I went a, a couple of steps further. I, actually, um, for the last two weeks, I've just been chilling with my younger cousins who are Liberian. Because I I want to portray a 15-year-old. I'm 27. Mm-hmm. So, like, 15 is, what? oh, God. Yeah. It's 12 <laughs> years ago. So, like, you know, I'm just trying to refresh my memory of what it felt to be in that, that headspace and thinking that you know everything. But then being in, like, such a horrific moment in time of that 15-year-old life. Like, most 15-year-olds have to deal with bullies. You know, mm-hmm. she's dealing with war. She's yeah. dealing with violence. So, so yeah, that's what I've been trying to do. Just trying to make her as authentic as I possibly can. Is there anything about doing this role so far that has surprised you or scared you? <laughs> yeah. Or, or made you happy? I don't know. It scares me that I can almost cry on cue every time I read that monologue. <laughs> Are you talking about that scene we have yeah. together? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just... Uh... And like when I try to practice it at home, I try not to be emotional because I, especially because I have listening ears, and right. I don't want them to like lose yes. what you know. Mommy, what's what's wrong? Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that too. But the my husband and my family members, I don't want them to hear either because I don't want them to lose that when they come that watch fresh, the show. Oh yeah, yeah, those fresh eyes. Yeah. So like I'm just like reading it like this. Like, it was funny, my aunt heard me, and she was like, do you know what you're talking about? And I was like, yeah. She was like, so why are you reading it like that? And I was just like... Don't worry, this is my method. Yeah, like, it's all right. Just just trust and believe, you will be in tears. What surprised me is how much I have in common with my character. Because um, Dee had us write out, like, the things that we have similar and the things that we have different from our characters. And I just felt like, man, what what can I... Like, she ain't got no kid, I got two. She ain't married, well, she kind of is... I'm really married. Right. Like it was just right. so it was so much that I felt that we um differed, but the more that I dig, I see like her ideals are the same ideals I have. And I don't know if it's because we share a cult the culture, but like yeah, I really get like feeling misplaced, especially when you're in a world where like you were taught one way and then that's just not Everything how the world is, is working. Yeah. yeah. So I, I really understand. And then trying to navigate and be like, oh, well, I'm going to take what I know and apply it to this world. And you're thinking you're doing something different, but you're really not. So you talked a little bit about your kids. Yeah, my you babies. Want, you want to tell us a little bit more about your babies? Yes. I have two precious little babies. Uh, Nima, she's four. Nasir is one. Going on 82. That's my little man. And then Nima, she's, she's a ball of energy. She's a fire sign. <laughs> That's my little diva. In a good way. In a good way. She's very vocal. And that makes me so proud that I, I'm raising a woman who knows herself. Like, y'all don't yeah. understand. That stuff no, be I like, do. you know, everybody says that both of them look like him and I'm like they don't even look alike so how they both look like him <laughs> all right whatever yeah she it. looks just like you I think so yeah she's your mini me she's my mini me very theatrical very dramatic but she's smart she's so smart and my little man he's smart too and he's witty already 
Like, he has this way of looking. Like, I remember one time she had pushed him down accidentally, and he just kind of looked at her like, for real? Really, sis? You you knew I was here. Right. Like, you know? He didn't even need words. No, he didn't. He it's said just, it all with his eyes. He just looked like, all right, all right. As we get ready to wrap up, is there anything that you want to promote? Anything you got coming up or anything like that? You know, y'all can follow me on my social medias. That sounds good. <laughs> Where can they find you? Um, at Bali, G-B-A-L-E dot Allen. That's on Instagram. And Bali Allen on Facebook as well. And I need a cool Twitter handle. So I need y'all to help me out with that. Because I need to get better with social media. I really do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bali. All right. Thanks. Young Black and Culture. Young Black and Culture is a segment we use to highlight up-and-coming events and productions of Black artists in Charlotte. Young Black playwright Stacy Rose is holding an Indiegogo fundraiser. The project is called The Danger, an homage to Strange Fruit. It's described as a theatrical symphony that explores America's dark legacy of violence against Black bodies. Help Stacy raise the funds to bring this production to the light. Every dollar counts. To back this young black artist, visit Indiegogo, that's I-N-D-I-E-G-O-G-O dot com and search The Danger 2018. Want to support young black and financially? Visit our Patreon page at Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash young black and no spaces and is spelled out. And if you're interested in sponsoring an episode, email us at youngblackandtb, that's T as in Tracy and B as in Brie, at gmail.com. Again, that's youngblackandtb at gmail.com. Thanks for the love, you guys. That's all for this episode of Young Black And. If you've enjoyed this episode, give us five stars and a review on iTunes. We'd love to hear from you. Also follow us on Instagram at youngblack underscore and that's a and d underscore or follow us on facebook at young black and if you have an upcoming event or you'd like for us to spotlight a black artist message us on facebook or on instagram bye